If you could change any choices you have ever made, would you? You can always make another choice and change the course of your success. Everyone has the potency to make inspired choices. Get ready to listen, share, and experience the creativity that is you. Now, here is the host of Inspired Choices Radio Show, Christine McIver. Welcome, 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 my friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yes, I am your host, Christine McIver, and we have another episode that we're bringing you on the Inspired Choices Show on the Inspired Choices Network. So are you ready to be inspired or maybe even challenged? Well, that's what I do. That's what I'm known for. My customers, my clients, my coaching clients most especially know that that's what I do. I'm going to challenge you. I'm going to challenge you so that you can get in the the direction that you want to be going in your life, in your business, in your relationships, whatever it is that you desire more of. I am going to challenge you because you know what? We don't move forward through the easy days. We move forward through the challenging days. And how many challenges have we had in the last couple of years, right? Right now, um, this is October the 20th, 2021. That's a lot of teas. Um, And for the last two years, we've had quite a few challenges. And yet here we are. We're still here. And how much have we actually grown? How much has we actually learned And how much have we actually expanded our abilities through all of these times? Well, when you are challenged and you're willing to be challenged, you will actually grow just like a muscle, any muscle. And that's what this is all about. So today we're talking about courageous conversations with your customers or your clients. Last week, we talked about courageous conversations about money. Now, I don't know if you got to hear that show. If you didn't, I really want to encourage you to go back and listen to it. Because for me, it was something that really speaks to me a great deal that we do not have. First of all, we avoid courageous conversations, right? But talking about money is such a hot topic. Did you know that that's the number one reason that people get divorced is about money? Well, it might actually be advantageous for us to learn how to have kind, respectful, real, real mind expanding conversations and get comfortable with having these courageous conversations about money. It's an important subject. It's part of our world. And it's certainly part of, I think every single person can learn to communicate about money in a greater way each and every day, because it's a hot trigger trigger subject. But today we're talking about courageous conversations with customers and clients. So before we get to that, I wanna tell you a little bit about myself. So I am a strategic business coach. I have been coaching now for, Oh, I think 13 or 14 years. I've had my own radio podcast TV show now for um, I'm into my 11th year. And I'm also the founder and owner of Inspired Choices Network. It's uh, it's something that kind of evolved out of having my own show. And it was a surprise to me. And it certainly has challenged me to grow. And I'm very grateful for the opportunity that has been presented to me. But the one thing that you will know about me is I challenge myself all of the time to grow and it has become part of who I am and part of what I bring to the table. So I oftentimes will work with entrepreneurs and assisting them to grow their businesses. Now, a lot of people, when they hear about a a business coach, they think it's somebody that talks about, you know, the the services or the pricing or, you know, how to market and all of that. And that's part of it. But the greater part of it is actually working with the individual, the business owner and challenging them. And I love to do that. I absolutely love to because one, I know that people, when they have a desire to change, that it is so possible to move forward and create greater in that area. And two, I love business. Business to me is like my playground. And it has been since I was a very little girl. And if you haven't heard this story, I'm going to quickly tell you, if you have, 
bear with me. So when I was a little girl, um, I really didn't play with dolls very much. I actually would go into my father's office. He was self-employed and um, my younger brother would come with me because he was my playmate because we lived in a little village and uh, I would have him sit at what was, what was then called the secretary desk and he would use the typewriter and I would use the adding machine and I would walk around with my father's briefcase. So from being a very little girl, I always knew I wanted to be the boss. Um, yes, sometimes bossy, but to be a leader is what I really love to be and really inspire others to grow within themselves and be a leader in their own lives. Whether that is a leader in your own business or just a leader in your family or in your own personal choices, I love to inspire people in that way. And that's what I do. And it's it really is my desire to empower other people with knowledge that I've acquired through experience and through education so that you too can have the, the life that you enjoy and the business that you enjoy. And you know what? To be a creator in the world is to really be empowered. And you don't have to be somebody that is on the global stage. You can be somebody that's just on your own stage. But to be empowered is one of the most amazing spaces to be in in your life. And I think more and more people need to feel self-empowered and to feel really confident about that. And so if that's something that you would love to learn more about, whether it's for personal or business reasons, please contact me. You can reach me at my personal website, inspiredchoices.ca. You can send me an email, christine at inspiredchoices.ca, or you can find me on any social media platform. I'm sure to be there. Also, you can check out all of our shows. We are on over 220 platforms, both in live stream and in on-demand podcast platform, both audio and TV. Go to your favorite smart TV, go to your favorite podcast location, and just search the name. We will likely be there. And if we're not, please send me an email because I'll be sure to get us there. All right, let's get into today's show. So, Courageous conversations with clients and customers. You know, this is one that many of us avoid. We avoid these conversations with our clients and customers. We just want to tiptoe. We want to make sure everybody's happy. And we really don't want to rock the boat because it's about the money, right? It always oftentimes comes back to the money, especially when it comes to customers and clients. So do you try to wish these conversations away or avoid them like crazy? or confront them and hope it doesn't backfire. To have courage is to have your own back and have the back of others. So that's something that I really want people to understand. When you are willing to grow yourself, expand yourself, and have that very big courageous conversation, you're actually, you're actually doing it not just for yourself, but for the other person as well. You know, have you ever heard that saying, like, are we the pink elephant in the middle of the room? You know, like the big elephant, whether it's a white elephant or pink elephant, whatever it is, you walk into a room or you walk into a conversation and everybody knows there's something that we're avoiding talking about, right? Well, it's uncomfortable, but it gets louder. That uncomfortableness gets louder because it's actually trying to get your attention because now is the time for you to have that conversation. And that conversation is actually going to be a, a huge contribution to both of you. But the, the piece of it is that when, how you deliver that conversation and interact with that other person in a courageous way, but in a very um, respectful way, right? Uh, uh, in a way that you have dignity for, that person for yourself and for the relationship when you're operating with that intention it really can move beyond the uncomfortable it can move beyond the um this is just going to blow up or they're just going to walk away from me it's possible you can't control other people but what you can do is put the work in to learn how to have a courageous conversation that contributes to everyone involved so first things first, I want to review with you what the original definition of these words are. So courageous is to be brave, someone who is eager and spirited. So to be brave. So sometimes when we don't know 
what is going to be said on the other side, we need to be brave because you know what? Our mind oftentimes will go to fear and worry. So we have to be willing to be brave. And to be brave is to step forward in the desire to manifest change, right? So that's the first thing. So I want you to remember what courage is all about. Then conversation is a conversation is about both people coming together in a way to frequent or to bring their conversations in union and to to turn things around to really discuss in a in a informal way to exchange thoughts and in the spoken word and to be able to move forward now Remember that conversation, the act of verbal conversation is only one of the ways that we actually communicate. So going back to that whole piece about the pink elephant in the middle of the room, that's energy. We're picking up on the energy in the room. Well, people read the energy of the room. You know, have you ever heard people say, read the room? That's what you're doing. You're reading the energy of the room. But if we are also reading each other's energy, whether we understand that cognitively or not. If you've ever walked into a room and suddenly you're not feeling good, your stomach's upset, um, any kind of uncomfortableness within the body, that's actually your body communicating to you about what's going on in the room with you and with the other person as well. You may be experiencing this uncomfortableness in your body, but it may not be yours. It may be the other person. So remember that verbal conversation is only one way and it's the smallest way that we actually communicate. So when you understand conversation is beyond the verbal and you start to pay attention to that, you're going to be able to read more of what's happening and what is asking for our attention and what needs our attention in order to be able to move forward. For instance, people joke a lot about um, when when somebody says something like there's this long list of when a woman says this, she really means that, right? So when a woman says fine, she doesn't actually mean fine. She, she means you're going to pay for this. Okay. That's just, <laughs> you know, yes, sometimes that's true. And sometimes maybe it's not. But the fact of the matter is, is that you need to be able to read beyond the verbal. And so as you start to really drop your barriers of fear and worry, and when you're being brave and being brave to and be willing to read what's going on on all levels with the other person and with yourself, that's where you're going to have that conversation that is going to be one that's going to contribute to each and every person involved. And that's where when you are willing to be brave and you're willing to read, that other person is also going to drop their barriers. They're going to feel, they're going to start to experience the awareness that you are not putting up a fight energy. You're not putting up a wall energy, that you're really there being vulnerable by dropping your barriers. And the word vulnerability doesn't mean that you're going to be at risk. We, we've, we usually use the word in modern day society today that vulnerability is about exposing yourself as if um, you're going to be hurt in some way. But the real word of vulnerability is about being forthright. Vulnerability is about being willing to share the whole truth of where you are at in that moment. And when you are being brave and you have your own back, and that's what being brave is, it's about having your own back and knowing no matter what, you're going to have your own back. You can be vulnerable and you can know that in that space of vulnerability, you are going to be the invitation for the other person to be vulnerable as well. This is key because if you're going to have a conversation that creates change, you've got to be willing to drop those barriers and be vulnerable, right? And once you start to do this, I can promise you, my friends, it does get easier. It absolutely does, especially when you've had these courageous conversations and that the, 
you are all good on the other side of the conversation. In other words, if you're worried about having a conversation with a customer or a client and you believe that they're going to fire you or drop you or walk away or, you know, short you financially or badmouth you or whatever, then you're going to hold back. But when you tell the truth of where you are at and you drop your barriers and have those courageous conversations, that person is going to lean into you even more. We're going to get into a lot more of this, and these pieces are very, very important until we get into examples about having these courageous conversations after our break. So you're listening to Inspired Choices with myself, Christine McIver, here on the Inspired Choices Network. I look forward to having you join me after the break. We'll be right back. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspire Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Inspired Choices Show with Coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my friends. Oh, my gosh. I love having these conversations. I hope they really do speak to you as much as they speak to me, because to me, these are some important aspects of growing within ourselves and absolutely growing within our businesses. So if you're just joining, we're talking about courageous conversations with customers or clients. And before we went to our first break, what I was speaking to was when you're willing to grow and expand yourself and have courageous conversations, you're not only doing it for yourself, but for the other person in the conversation, which is critical. Understand that if you're feeling uncomfortable about something, 99% of the time, that other person is also feeling it or picking up that you are feeling it, which is then going to create some angst for them. I hope that makes sense. So, you know, as I was saying in the first segment, verbal conversation is the first and least amount of way that we communicate. I don't remember the percentages off the top of my head right now, but we com we communicate with eye contact. We communicate with sounds as in you know, or rolling our eyes or being shocked or different things like that. But we also communicate with our energy, which is the primary way that we communicate with people, which most people ignore. And so when you understand that your primary way that you communicate is with energy and you understand that everybody else is communicating that way as well, and we all have these sensory um, abilities within ourselves to pick up the energy of what's going on for another person, you really can't hide what's happening. And so when you're willing to go, okay, right, 
this person is probably picking this up. I, I can't hide how I'm feeling, even if I use the right words or I'm smiling perfectly or whatever the case may be. If I've really worked on manipulating my voice when I'm not happy, whatever the case may be, you can get very talented in that way, but you cannot change the purity of your energy. And while the other person may not be able to read energy clearly and understand it, they're still picking it up and it can be impacting how they respond to you, how they reach out to you, how they don't reach out to you. The whole interactive dance in the relationship, they're picking it up whether they realize it or not. And it does impact their actions. Okay, so let's get clear. You have to understand that having these conversations are critical. Being willing, being willing to have these conversations are critical because they will move everybody forward. So, you know, sometimes people don't want to have conversations because they're really worried that if I have that conversation with that person, I know, and on some level, you're going to know this when it's true, I know that they're going to no longer work with me. And my fear is that if they no longer work with me, I won't have that money coming in, right? Truth. How many people have experienced that or have thought that but never shared it with somebody? Okay. I definitely have experienced that. I definitely have had those thoughts for sure. And then I had a conversation with myself and I'm like, okay, right. So if I know for a fact that I believe strongly in the law of attraction, I know it's true. So I know that as I get clear and clear with my energy and the truth of who I am, and I am admitting that energy out to the world, like attracts like, right? The energies that match will come forward. So as I have gotten clearer and clearer with who I am, what I believe, what I know, the messages that I bring to the world, how I work with people, I have attracted more and more customers and clients. Now, as I've done that, as I've gotten clearer, right? So maybe my energy was here and now my energy is here. So it, if you're listening auditorially, you know, just pick a level and then maybe it's, it's changed. That level has changed. Maybe you've gone in a new direction, either up or down or whatever. It's not a, a good or a bad, right? And, and so as your energy changes, the energy of your customers or clients may no longer match, okay? As relationships change, whether we're talking about intimate relationships, whether we're talking about family relationships, employment relationships, customer and client relationship, whatever we're talking about, as one person's energy changes, if the other people are not also expanding themselves and growing themselves and doing their personal development work, their belief systems, their, um, their way of operating, all the rest of it, if those energies are not continuing to develop together, the relationships have to end because they are no longer a match, okay? So as you are expanding yourself and you are growing yourself, and I believe strongly that everyone should be doing personal development on a continuous basis, I don't think that should ever stop. I don't think there's any perfect individual out there. And I think that there's always plenty, plenty to learn about ourselves and to grow ourselves to create a better us and a creator environment in our lives and in the world. So as you expand and you become clearer and more true as you get to know who you are and you get very clear about what is important to you and you start to just come out as a deeper more pure self you are going to attract people that are on that same energy level but that also means that the customers and clients that you've been working with they will no longer be a match so as you begin to understand this a lot of people will allow their fear their belief systems that are not true, they will allow those belief systems to stop themselves from expanding, to stop themselves from really being truthful with who they are on a day-to-day -day basis, and most especially in their business. And you know what happens when we do that? We, are very, we can be very unhappy. We can create a very unhappy work life for ourselves, even if we're self-employed and we love what we do but we create angst within ourselves. We create angst within our body then 
as you continue to stay in that type of environment where you're un happy, this is going to ver reverberate down into the cells of your body. And that's where you're going to create dis-ease in your body. This is a really important piece about getting clear with who you are and the conversations that are working or not working. So when you avoid having a courageous conversation and you avoid actually speaking the truth of where you are at, you're actually not only trying to hold on to something that no longer matches you and create angst in your life, but you're also locking out new opportunities. You are locking out new possibilities. And why would you do that? Well, most of us are comfortable knowing what we know and very uncomfortable with the idea of going into the unknown. But here's what I also know, my friends, is that each and every one of us are going to continually, continually, our whole lives desire more and more and more. And so as you continue to desire greater and greater, and you keep reaching for that by personal development, education, experience, as you continue to evolve, you will move in the direction of those continuous desires. And you will create there is an unlimited, infinite amount of possibilities and abundance in the world. But if you allow an old belief system to lock you down, then you are going to actually lock out those possibilities coming to you. So let's come back to this conversation, the idea of having this conversation with a client or a customer. If you desire to have greater in your life and you desire to grow and expand, you've got to be willing to speak to what is the here and now. So if you have a client or a customer that, let's say they're creating a lot of angst in your world. You know, when I first started coaching, I remember I was so scared that I was going to do it wrong. I was so afraid that they were going to fire me. Oh my gosh, I just had put so much responsibility on the, the clients that I wasn't willing to speak to what was not working for me. I was so incredibly afraid of losing the money because money is a part of our lives, right? But I remember a, a number of times that I would be working with customers and clients and I, you know, it was supposed to be a one hour call. Now, this is a very, this is kind of one thing that all of us uh, coaches experience at the very beginning of coaching people is it was supposed to be a one hour coaching call. And then, you know, I'm watching the time and they're going over and they're going over farther and farther and longer and longer. And my mind would justify it. And they'd be like, oh, well, they really like working with me. So that's why they want to keep talking to me. And what Handed, started happening then is as this would repeat itself week after week, then I would start to get resentful. And I'd be like, in my mind, you know, that that part of that brain would be like, yeah, they're just taking advantage of me. And then my other part of my brain would be like, yeah, but you can't fire them because then you're not going to have the money. Like it was this chaos that I kept creating in my mind. And I was at the effect of all of that. The customer wasn't. The customer was just fine making the choices that they were making, but their needs might have been met, but my needs were not being met. I wasn't honoring myself. And in not honoring myself, I actually wasn't honoring them because we had made an agreement. And when you're not sticking to your agreement, nobody's being honored in that agreement. So it took some courage and uh, to have a conversation. And so what I started to do was I would say, just to let you know, we have 10 minutes left in our conversation, in our session today. So what would you like to finish up with? And then we, I would get close. And of course, this took practice. This took practice. And the first couple of times I said it, I would be holding my breath nearly. And, and then um, when I was doing sessions in person, I would say that. And then when we got close to the end, I'd be like, OK. And I would stand up. I would actually stand up in my room. And oh, my gosh, that was so nerve wracking initially. But it got to the point where the customers and the clients would be like, OK, I know we only have like 10 more minutes left. They would actually start to get on to that and they would honor me. Now, did some clients leave? They did. 
They did. But when I was honoring of myself and I was honoring of what I said I would deliver, new customers came forward. And I changed as I would evolve and, and really move deeper and deeper into my capacity with coaching. I went from charging $25 an hour to um, I charge 10 times that amount now. I'm $250 an hour and I'm well worth it. And I know that. And when I show up to the call, I'm not just holding my breath waiting for the hour to go by or waiting for them to stop speaking so we can finish because we're already 10 minutes over. I'm showing up with everything I've got to bring the best of my skills to the table to support them. So we are up for our second break of the show. <laughs> this is going quickly as usual. And when we get back, we're going we're gonna to talk about some uh, courageous conversations with customers and clients and what you can do in the midst of those. So you are listening to Inspired Choices with myself, Christine McIver, here on the Inspired Choices Network, and we'll be right back. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app, our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Inspired Choices Show with coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. All right, my friends, thank you for joining me today and for sticking around for the entire conversation because there's a lot more to come about it. So what we're talking about today is courageous conversations with customers and clients. In the first section, we were talking about how we need to get clear with ourselves, get vulnerable, drop those barriers and understand that we're communicating much more beyond the verbal with our energy. When you're willing to talk about the pink elephant in the middle of the room, it will create greater because... It's kind of like um, it's kind of like eating something and it doesn't agree with your body. Eventually, it's going to impact you. Well, something that's not being spoken to between two people or in a group of people that you can really sense in the room, it's going to impact. It's definitely, definitely going to impact that. You know, the first part of uh, my career, I was in human resources. And my clients and my customers were actually employees of the organization, um, right from the president down to, you know, anybody in any level. They were my customers. They were my clients. And I learned very quickly that I had to have a lot of courageous conversations. I'm going to give you an example of one of those. Um, <laughs> one of my the very first time I was in the room and someone was being fired from a human resources perspective, I was so nervous. I was so afraid. And honestly, um, I could put myself into that person's position. And um, I know that I was crying. I know that I was crying after it was all over. It really impacted me a lot because I recall the very first time I got fired from a job. And um, I was a single mom, a newly single mom, and I had just 
um, come out of college, upgraded my skills and came out of college. This was my first job and I was killing it. And um, the boss that I had didn't like that I was actually bringing ideas to the table that she wanted to not be brought to the table. But yet the owner um, was very happy with the information. But the, my boss's husband and the owner of the organization were friends. So she had a trump card and she played that trump card and got me fired. Well, I remember leaving there that day and I was shaking so badly and I was, I could not see clearly and I drove home. And when I got home, I was beyond emotional. And, um, I thought about it later. I didn't even recall driving. I know I did drive, but I didn't didn't recall the actual drive home uh, because I was so emotional. It was so difficult for me after the fact, you know, so worried about what I was going to do and where I was going to go next. And so when I was in that conversation uh, with that first person being fired, you know, I was I was re experiencing what I had gone through, imagining that that's what she was going to go through. And so the idea of actually firing someone um, was very difficult for me initially. And then, and then I started to have courageous conversations. And I actually started to speak with people when we would hire them about the process and about what to expect if they would ever get fired. And I would actually have that conversation with them on their very first day of work. And while it was uncomfortable for them, I also wanted to empower them. So I would actually say, you know, this, here's the job, right? We'd already gone through this. Here's the job description. Here are the tasks of the job. Here's what success is going to look like. Here's what's going to be expected to fulfill this role. And I would go over that and over that with them. And then I would say to them, now, if you should ever find yourself being fired, I want you to understand that number one, it's not going to be a surprise. It's not going to be a surprise because we are going to have had a conversation about it at least three times that things are not working out. And so in actual fact, if the job requires something that you're not choosing to do or able to do, then I want you to understand that you're the person that has decided to end the employment relationship. I'm just the person doing the paperwork. Having that conversation up front, while it was startling, it really had people go, wow, I've never thought of it that way. So then I would, of course, have more courageous conversations when, you know, maybe at review time or during some turbulent moments in their employment relationship. And I would review that piece and I would say, now, here's the job description. Here's your tasks. And there, you know, you're doing great on these ones, but there's these ones here and you're not doing well. So how can we support you? And I remember this one individual that we had many conversations and things just were not improving for the role. There was nothing wrong with the person. It was what the role was getting and was not getting. And finally, at the end, um, we sat down and I said, you know, this is not an easy conversation to have, but I, I'm sure you're not going to be surprised that today is going to be your last day with the company. And that individual said, I'm not surprised. You did what you said you were going to do. And as he laughed, and this even chokes me up now, he said, may I hug you for treating me with such dignity? And it was like, oh my God, like this is what it's supposed to be about. It's supposed to be being kind to each other. And it's not about the person is a bad employee or a good employee. It's about a match. Where's the match? Sometimes it, it seems like it's going to be a good employment match. And sometimes it's not. And the same can be said about any relationship. If we're willing to be upfront and we're willing to talk about the needs, the needs of the role, the needs of the relationship, whatever that is, if we're willing to be clear about the needs, then everyone is, is aware at the very beginning and throughout the entire process of the relationship. But when someone's needs are not being met, 
when an employer's needs, the, the position, the employee's needs, when there are needs that are not being met, that means that either something has to change or the relationship is ending. So the great thing about having these conversations, about being willing to have these conversations with your customers and clients is that you get to clarity and you get to know what is missing for them and what is missing for you. So for instance, should you have a customer that, let's say you've got a customer that is um, not paying their bill, right? I've certainly been in that position where I've set up a, a, a payment plan with someone and they're not paying their bill. When I've been willing to treat them with respect, but also have my back, do you know what's happened every single time? Is they've actually respected me more instead of just avoiding the conversation. That's what most people will do. They will either avoid the conversation or they'll get very angry and they will send somebody to, you know, muscle them in some verbal way or send them aggressive letters or maybe they're sending aggressive emails, whatever the case may be. But, you know, here's the thing. When you get into a relationship, you want to have clarity. And what's a great way to have clarity is, first of all, let's put it in writing. Is, is, do you have a contract? Do you have a client um, employer, real, uh, sorry, a client and coach contract or an agreement? Do you have a um, customer um, uh, coach, whatever, you understand who's ever providing the, the products or the services and who's ever paying and receiving that product or service, do you need an agreement in place? When you put an agreement in place, everybody is on the same page. So when someone comes back and says, well, I didn't know that, well, you can point to the contract or the agreement. That helps you to have a clear conversation with a customer or a client, okay? That's first and foremost. And then as you have these, these conversations with them, perhaps there is some parts of the, the agreement that they're not understanding. Maybe it wasn't clear to them, right? So instead of getting upset and angry, perhaps that's an opportunity for you to bring more clarity to your agreement or your contract. So th there's learning for you as well, because that's going to have you grow in your understanding and to be able to show up differently with your customers and clients in the future, right? But don't just leave it on the paper. Speak to the, to the relationship and to the agreement that you're both coming to. Speak to what is in the agreement. After you've sent it out, have that conversation. Do you understand everything in the agreement? Do you have any questions about the agreement? Do you understand this is, you know, for instance, if you are going to be a host on our network, do you understand that you are going to have a weekly show, that you're responsible to have your show submitted by this date? Do you understand that, you know, these are all the aspects? And so you go over and you clarify, you clarify them. And then, and then, when they have deeper clarity and they see that you're willing to discuss it, not just kind of, you know, push the paper to them and, and avoid it, then they know that the door is open. So when someone understands that the door is open to have the conversation, they're going to converse with you more. And their comfort level, while they may not feel comfortable having courageous conversations, what you've done is you've actually led the way. You've given them an example, all right? So you're setting the tone of the relationship. And that is very, very important if you want to have a successful relationship. Okay, we are going to go to our final break of the show. And when we get back, we're going to go over a few more points all about having courageous conversations with your customers and your clients. You're listening to Christine McIver on the Inspired Choices show here on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back, my friends. Many of us make choices in our lives based on our past experiences or what others believe. What would our lives be like if we made our choices based on what we desire for our futures? 
When you join Inspired Choices Radio Show with coach Christine McIver, you'll be provoked to look at what is true and what you know but may not choose that requires your attention. Christine does not hold back and brings all her expertise during each and every show. Are you ready to create the life and the living you truly desire? Listen for Inspired Choices Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows, along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Inspired Choices Show with coach Christine McIver. To participate in the program, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email by sending to christine at inspiredchoices.ca. Now, back to the program. Oh, welcome back, my friends. Today we are talking about courageous conversations. Not easy, but so essential. And we're talking specifically about customers and clients. So here's something that I really want to uh, get very clearly in your mind. And if you're just joining us, definitely go back and listen from the beginning because each piece led to the next. But when you start to have, you have that courageous conversation with your new customer, your new client at the very beginning, you put it in writing. And it does not have to be some big legal agreement. It can be a very simple uh, co uh, contract or agreement. But when you put that in place and then you have a conversation about it after they've had an opportunity to review it, that sets the stage. If you were to lean into continuously having courageous conversations, they get less um, courageous. They, they begin to be your norm for you as you keep practicing and, and exercising that muscle of conversations. So what you will find is that if you are going along and let's say you've had a customer, um, let's say you're coaching, let's talk about coaching. Let's say you've had a, a coaching client for let's say three months and they're going to be your client for six months or a year or whatever. At some point, you might want to say, and I really encourage you to say, so tell me, how is the coaching relationship going for you? How are you enjoying the coaching relationship? Ask those questions because they may not immediately come back and say, well, I'd prefer it like this or I'd like this change. But what you're going to do again is you're going to plant the seed of having open conversations about what most people believe are uncomfortable. All right. And so when you do that, when you set that stage and you continue to come to that place, if ever that person is unhappy or feel their needs are not being met in some way, they're going to feel much more the open invitation to be able to have that conversation. Now, when they have that conversation with you, it's not usually about ending the relationship. It's usually about having their needs met in a different way than they have been to date. But if you have not set the stage, if you have actually not set the relationship up to have these types of conversations, when the individual finally brings this to the table with you, they may actually be ending the relationship because they are so uncomfortable and they have not been willing to talk about where they're at in the stages of the relationship. And so most people, if they are uncomfortable, they just want to run away and feel comfortable. So what could you actually do differently 
that would actually bring them comfort, that would actually set the stage for them to feel at ease to discuss anything. Imagine that, that not only are you perhaps giving them a product or a service, but you are also teaching them how to have these very courageous conversations and have these conversations in a way that allows them to feel empowered. When somebody feels empowered in a relationship, they don't feel like they have to cut that relationship off or end it. They feel like they have choice. And when someone feels empowered and feel like they have choice and that your door is open, it's going to be so much easier for them to share where they are at. What I really want you to understand is having courageous conversations is a muscle. And when you are willing to exercise that muscle from the very beginning of a relationship, it is going to get easier and easier. And you are going to develop stronger and stronger relationships. Understand the courageous conversations, the opportunity to have courageous conversations are always going to be there. How you approach them, what you're willing to do to set the stage for them changes everything going forward in your relationship, okay? So when you are willing to do the work to learn how to have those conversations and how to set up your relationship from the very beginning to have those courageous conversations, everyone feels empowered and you're going to create a better relationship. You are always going to have a stronger and stronger relationship because in having courageous conversations and coming from the space of dignity for everyone, people are going to feel respected. People are going to feel heard. People are going to feel like they are valued because you've set the stage. This is not about people fighting. This is not about people blaming or making somebody else right or wrong. This is about people being willing to talk about what's working and what's not working. And that is always going to come up because it's always going to become, come up because we're always going to have change happening. And change is not a bad thing. Change is actually what comes forth when we have greater desires. And we're always going to be having greater desires happening in our lives and in our businesses, in our careers, whatever the Whatever the case may be, we're always going to be reaching for more. And in that reaching, change will occur. So as you learn to exercise that muscle of courageous conversations, not only with other people, but with yourself, and you're willing to really look at what's going on and, and be open, be open to the possibility of someone having a courageous conversation, on the other side of it, can be so many rewards. And sometimes, sometimes when you have courageous conversations with people, the relationships will end. That's not a wrongness. You know, I can recall that that time that I was talking about earlier when I got fired from that job. Yes, it was very upsetting, but I was actually holding myself back and my desires had gone beyond that employment relationship. My desires had gone to something greater and greater. But I was not willing, the, the human Christine was not willing to move forward. But my desires were pulling me forward. So what came out of that after that employment relationship ended was a greater position. Each and every position after that got greater and greater. But I wasn't willing to be vulnerable and upfront with myself about what was going on. And so the universe needed to create a kick in the butt for me. And that's what that was. When we're willing to really be honest with ourselves, though, we will find ourselves in less and less of those positions and we will just choose beyond to the next greatest thing. Friends, I really appreciate you being here. I hope that what we shared today will create greater in relationships for you. 
your customers and clients, and any relationships that you are having. Next week, we're going to be talking about courageous conversations with your team. And I can't wait to have that, especially being one of my team members is going to be producing my show. So until next week, I want you to take great care of yourself, be willing to be vulnerable with what's going on, and be willing to ask more questions about what's working and what's not working in your life. And remember, until we meet again, you can always make another choice. Take care, my friends. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Thank you for choosing to listen to Inspired Choices Radio Show. Christine McIver will return next Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, be willing to choose what you really desire. This is your life, making the choices that bring you all that you desire.